guys, welcome to Talking Money with New Z, personal finance made simple. Today, I'm going to be talking about the battle of the S&P 500 ETFs. First, let me define the S&P 500. What is it? The S&P 500 was introduced in 1957 and it is a stock market index that is used to measure the performance of America's 500 largest companies. The collection of companies that make up the S&P 500 represents 75% of the U.S. market and it is used to measure the health of the U.S. economy. To qualify to be part of the S&P 500, a company must be in the United States and its value on the market must be 13 billion or more. At least half of the company's shares must be available to the public. The share price must be $1 or more per share. The company must produce an annual financial report. At least half of the company's fixed assets and sales must be from the United States. And finally, a company must have at least four consecutive quarters of positive earnings. Because of very strict rules for companies to qualify and to remain as part of the S&P 500, the list of companies that are part of the S&P 500 changes from time to time. The list of companies that are part of the S&P 500 today are not the same as they were 20, 30, 40 years ago, etc. And I can also guarantee you that in the future, 20, 30, 40 years from now, the companies in the S&P 500 would have changed as well. That's what makes investing in ETFs like the S&P 500 so good because at all times, as companies come and go, your money is always invested in the best of the best. Just watch this following video that shows how the top 10 companies of the S&P 500 have changed over the years.
was fascinating, right? Next, let me show you how much money you would have today if you invested 1,000 US dollars, which is about 16,000 Rand, in the S&P 500 50, 40, 30, 20, and 10 years ago. This is a website that shows how much you would have today if you invested in the S&P 500 in the past. So it's showing starting from the year 1965, ending in 2022. It shows that if you put in a $1,000 lump sum once off and didn't invest any more money, you would have 226640 US dollars. Also, it says this is a return on investment of 22,564% or 9.89% per year. Let's see how much this is in Rand. So let's copy that figure and go to the Google US dollar Rand exchange. Then I'll just paste that figure in there. Let me remove this comma here and put it at the end. In Rands, you would have 3,679,801 rents let's check how much you would have now if you invested 50 years ago in 1972 calculate you would have 150,693 dollars it says this is a return of 14,969 percent or 10.44 percent per year let's take this number and see how much that is in rands that is two million four hundred and forty six thousand six hundred and ninety six rands how much would you have if you invested 40 years ago which is 1982 hit calculate today you would have eighty six thousand three hundred and fifty two us dollars it says this is a return on investment of eight thousand 535% or 11.64% per year. In rands, you would have, let's take that number, copy that, paste it into our calculator and see how much you have in rands. In rands, you would have 1,402,036. How much would you have if you invested 30 years ago, which is in 1992? You would have 16,613 US dollars. This is a return on investment of 1,561% or 9.65% per year. Let's copy this, paste it into our calculator to check the RAND value. In RANDs, you would have 269,733 RANDs. Let's see how much you'd have if you invested 20 years ago in 2002. Calculate that. You would currently have $4,966. This is a return of 396% or 8.13% per year. Let's copy this and see the RAND value. You would have in RANDs. 80,629. Lastly, let's see how much you'd have if you invested 10 years ago in 2012. Let's calculate that. You would have 3,588 US dollars. This is a return on investment of 258% or 12.94% per year. How much is this in rents? Copy that and let's paste in here. Remove the comma. You would have 58,255 rands. And guys, what you can see is that the longer you invest, the more money you get out at the end. So somebody who invested 57 years ago got more money than somebody who invested 10 years ago. The moral of the story is that you must invest for as long as you possibly can. Another thing is that remember that the investment amount was just a once off so this person dumped one thousand dollars onto the market and went away they didn't come back and do additional deposits if they did they would have much 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 more money than what they got in these calculations so what is this telling you the longer you invest the better and the more you keep on adding to your investments the better the S&P 500 index is the most common and widely known index in the entire world and it is available on most stock markets all over the world. You're going to find it on Asian markets, on African markets, on European markets and obviously on the American markets. On the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, the JSE, there are currently 
four S&P 500 ETFs. There's the one invest S&P 500, CoreShares S&P 500, Satrix S&P 500, and Signia iTrix S&P 500. All of these are exactly the same. They've got the same 500 American companies, but how do you decide which one to invest in exactly? Well, for ETFs that are exactly the same, first, look at the total expense ratio or TER, which is how much it will cost you annually to own the ETF. One Invest S&P 500 charges 0.27% annually. So for every 10,000 Rand that you invest, you're going to pay 27 Rand in fees. CoreShares S&P 500 charges 0.39%. So for every 10,000 Rand you invest, you're going to pay 39 Rand annually. Satrix S&P 500 charges 0.25%. So for every 10,000 Rand invested, you're going to pay 25 Rand in fees annually. Signia S&P 500 charges 0.19%. So for for every 10,000 Rand that you invest, you're going to pay 19 Rand annually. Second, you look at the dividend distributions. One Invest S&P 500 is a total return ETF. This means that dividends are not paid to investors, but they are automatically reinvested into the ETF. CoreShares S&P 500 pays dividends to investors biannually or twice a year in April and October. Satrix S&P 500 is also a total return ETF, meaning that dividends are not paid to investors, but they are automatically reinvested into the ETF. Signia iTrix S&P 500 pays dividends to investors biannually or twice a year in January and July. This is etfsa.co.za. This is the website that has got all the ETFs that are listed on the JSE. They are listed alphabetically, starting with One Invest ETFs, then APSA, then Cloud Atlas ETFs, CoreShares, FNB, Satrix, and lastly, Signia ETFs. So this is where I get all my information about ETFs. Here's the TER, which is the total expense ratio that I spoke about. So for One Invest S&P 500, here is the TER of 0.27%. Then we move on to Core Shares S&P 500. Here's the TER of 0.39%. Then we move on to Satrix S&P 500. Here is the TER of 0.25%. Then lastly, Signia Atrix S&P S&P 500, here's the TR of 0.19%. Then we scroll up to this part that says to view a brief description of the different types of ETFs, click here. So this is where I click. The PDF document opens. Let me just make it larger. So this PDF document shows all of the ETFs that are on the JSE. The name is under this column, description, and then finally dividends paid. So there's this QQQ. What is that? So here is the key to read this table. Where it says Q, Q means quarterly. So the dividends are paid every quarter. By A means biannually. Dividends are paid twice a year. M stands for monthly. TR is total return product and it explains dividends automatically reinvested. So investors don't get the cash. Rather, the dividends are reinvested into the ETF. Then finally, there's ND, which stands for no dividends paid. Now let's look for each of those S&P 500 ETFs. Let's start with one invest S&P 500. Here we go. It says that it's a TR. So it's a total return ETF. Investors don't get the cash payment. Rather, the dividends are reinvested into the ETF. The next one is core shares S and P. 500. It says by A, meaning by annually. So therefore, investors will get cash payments twice a year. Next would be Satrix S and P 500. It's a total return ETF. Investors don't get cash payments. Rather, those dividends are automatically reinvested into the ETF. And then finally is Signia I Trix S and P. It is a by annual dividend payer, meaning that investors will get cash payments twice a year. Let's go back to etf.co.za. I want to show you one last thing. When it comes to dividends, how do you know which month 
the dividends are paid. So for core shares S&P 500, you click under the last column that says view, you click there, then this PDF document will open. This is where you'll see the dividend history and it's showing for the last three years. You can see in 2019, it paid dividends in April and in October and these are the amounts. Then in 2020, again, April, October with the amounts, 2021, April and October as well. And then for 2022, the dividends have been paid for April. The next date is for October. Same thing applies with the Signia iTrix S&P 500. You click on view on the last column. Then this document opens. You'll see dividend history for the last three years. You can see that in 2020, they paid in January as well as in July. Those are the amounts. Then in 2021, January, July. 2022, January, July as well. For me, the winner is the Signia S&P 500 because it has the lowest TER of 0.19% and it pays dividends twice a year. And of course, I buy my ETFs inside of my tax-free savings account, my TFSA. Guys, if you're going to be buying ETFs for long-term investing purposes, like investing for your retirement, for example, please buy them inside of your tax-free savings account, your TFSA, because you're going to avoid a lot of money in taxes. If you don't know what a TFSA is and what its advantages are, please watch my video about TFSA accounts by clicking on the link which is appearing on the top right hand corner of your screen right now. The principles that I have just shown you regarding the S&P 500 ETFs apply to all ETFs that are the same, whether you're buying them on the JSE or on international markets okay guys that's it for today's video i hope you enjoyed it if you did please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you have any questions or any comments please write them in the comment section below and i'll get back to you i'm going to see you in the next video bye guys